ICF has been like another world to me. Uh, it's allowed me to get outside the Olin bubble and spend time with different people. I've benefited from being able to spend time with people of different backgrounds who think about things differently than people with the Olin engineering mindset. It's been a welcome relief as well as a learning experience. I would also say that ICF has given me a wonderful opportunity to see God at work in people's lives and at other campuses. It has been really encouraging to see and hear stories about how God has worked in and through the ICF community at our respective campuses, especially as a leader at my own campus. I don't think I can distill just one piece of advice, but I would say, first and foremost, to invest in friendships. The time you spend with friends is far more valuable and memorable than the time you'll spend studying. College is a period of life where you have a unique chance to build deep, lasting relationships. Don't miss that chance. ICF is family. Even though I didn't really start coming until senior year, um, I'm just really amazed at how God's love can bring people from different walks of life all together. I've been incredibly blessed by the people in ICF, especially those in my small group. And I'm just really touched by the ways that they've reached out to me and accepted me despite my flaws and my weaknesses. And even though we only really see each other twice a week and sometimes even less than that, I always feel at home and comfortable. One piece of advice? I guess, never be too busy for people. Homework and projects and everything will undoubtedly take over our lives, but people are what matters. Never pass up an opportunity to love and serve one another. So at Olin, I have a good community of Christian followers, and it's good to do fellowship with them. But I think it's really valuable to meet people from different campuses and sort of hear their perspective and opinions. I think that's one thing that really deepens the faith, and ICF is really valuable in that way, that I can get a lot of information and have fellowship with really different people. One piece of advice I would give to ICFers is to, I guess, run and read. I learned this piece of advice from Will Smith from Fresh Prince, and he did a speech and he said, if you're willing to read, you keep pushing yourself forward, and if you keep pushing yourself forward, it sort of translates to running, because every step you take, you push yourself forward, and it goes in a cycle. You learn a little bit every day, and because you keep pushing forward through the scriptures, um, you can run the race with God even faster, and eh, not faster, but you can move forward. Wow, thinking about this is tough. I'm not too good with the whole re reflection business, but I'll do my best. So the first question asks how ICF is impacted me, right? Well, at the very least, you guys and the folks before you have shown me what a community in Christ is. It's not a perfect community, but I never expected it to be. Neither did I expect to find it to be so awesome and such a blessing. I've learned a ton about what I really cannot articulate, so you'll just have to trust me when I say that ICF can really grow you. Okay, and to the younger folks out here, share yourself, your wins and your losses. Some of the people here won't understand them, but you might be surprised by the people who do. Regardless, these people will do their best to love you. Impact? I don't know. Through ICF, I've been inspired by the love that God has shown us. Prayers answered, hearts healed. I've met lifelong friends and have memories and Bible lessons to cherish. Meme DD man, younger brothers and sisters, I can't give you any ultimate advice other than to pray. Tell God your problems, complain to Him, praise Him, share your burdens and your ups and downs with Him. I love you guys. The greatest thing about coming to ICF for me is meeting the people here. Both people who have graduated already and you young people. And of course the pastors, counselors, and Karis peeps. This circle of people are not your typical friends that you have around only when you need to have fun or to get non-college food or to do homework or to vent about every crappy thing in your life. They challenge you to seek truth, to be more honest to yourself, basically to do the right thing. And I think that's the most important part. In addition, they motivate and support you in the process to let you know that you're not alone in the struggles. So my piece of advice for you young people would be not to bottle up all your emotions and the deepest struggles. How did ICF impact my college experience? 
Even though I don't consider myself having love for a very long time, I believe that I've probably met the bulk of people who will make the biggest impact on my life. Um, I mean this when I say it, but I think each person in ICF has taught me something very valuable, no matter how big or small our interactions have been since the first time we've met. Um, I thank God for being so good and faithful and challenging me through each person in so many different ways to just get closer to God. And I think in this life, what better impact can one person have on another? One piece of advice that I leave for future ICFers is one of my favorite verses. Um, it's Philippians 2, 3-4. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Um, I think that humility is um, a willingness to love and to obey and serve and just be used in any way by God and for God with so much confidence. Um, it's a willingness to make a fool out of yourself, to get rejected, get misunderstood and fail um, time and time again, but you know, with the hope that God will use your weakness for good. You might still end up being, you know, quote unquote, the very last, but in this temporary world, I don't think that really matters when God promises that the last will be the first in his eternal kingdom. This is going to be more of a thank you. I want to thank ICF from my small group to the study leaders and self-sacrificing counselors to all the rest of you for making ICF what it is. Even if I haven't interacted with you directly or very often, your example has taught me to love and be loved. You taught me that God loves me in addition to the other things, and that is how ICF has changed my life. My best advice is to follow God's advice and enjoy Him as best as you can. When times get tough, remember 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. There's an old sermon illustration that I always laugh at, and I think that it sums up my college career pretty well. It's about a man who loses his home in a hurricane. He's trapped on the rooftop of his flooded house, everything's been destroyed, and he's waiting for God to come and save him. A raft floats by. The neighbor of his is captaining it. He has an inflatable raft, and he says, Come down, come down, we'll get you to safety. No, the man says, God will save me, not you. Get out of here. A motorboat comes by. The mayor's on the boat. It's filled with people. Cruises over to him. Come down, come down, they say. We have plenty of room, we'll get you to safety. But no, the man says again. It's not going to be you who saves me, it'll be God who saves me. A helicopter finally buzzes by, the Coast Guard. There's a rope ladder, there's a full crew. Take the ladder, the Coast Guard people say. Our base is nearby. But no, the man says, God will rescue me, not you, not your helicopter. A few days later, he dies from exposure, and he goes to heaven, and he asks God, Lord, why did you forsake me? Why were you not good to me? I prayed and prayed every day for you to save me, but you never came. And God replies, you fool, I sent two boats and a helicopter, didn't you notice? <laughs> you are not alone in ICF, you are not alone at your school, you are not alone in your hall, in your dorm, in your building. God has not forsaken you, and your campus is not a cold, desolate place. There are other people like you out there, people who yearn for community, people who are lonely and sad and who wonder, why am I here? Why did you bring me here, God? There are people there who yearn for openness and for honesty and to just be vulnerable and to not be judged. People who are just like you and they're also cooped up in their rooms and they're also afraid to come out. They're waiting for an angel from heaven to come down and deliver them from depression and loneliness and that could be you. And you could be them. You need to get out there. You need to be the effort. You need to be the change, as Gandhi says. You must be the change you wish for in this world. ICF didn't go from 15 people to 30 people to 40 people by accident. Our two small groups didn't go to four small groups by coincidence. We really wanted it, and we really strove for it, and we really, really, really prayed, and God answered to us. And in the most profound and unexpected way that I could have asked for freshman year, now I'm a senior, and I am so amazed at how God has worked.
It's surprising how deeply connected you can become with a fellowship. I'm not sure I'm fully aware of how integral ICF has been in my life for these past four years. It's been a second home to me, the thing to look forward to throughout the week. I've learned so much, been stressed beyond my limitations, and challenged to step out in faith through ICF. God is so good. My advice for future ICFers is that things of great value often come at great cost. You are made for more, so don't ever settle for less. Thank you.